Welcome to EDU TV with 4.5 lakh plus viewers and over 1500 educational repositories across the world. The founder is Mr. Pranav Guha Thakarada and co-founder is Ms. Tanya Sefi. Thank you so much, Tanya. Welcome to the Principles Podcast with Ashish Gupta. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Dr. Pramod Mahajan, Director, Principal, Sharjah Indian School, Sharjah. Welcome to the podcast, sir. How are you today? Yeah, thank you. I'm well. I'm fine. Enjoying the rain, uh, heavy rains here. So, sir, today is a very special topic for the students, who from for every student. It of the very different starting that. Sir, I would like to know and our audience would like to know about yourself and your journey from India to UAE. Yeah, this is Dr. Pramod Mahajan. Belongs to the family of educators rather than edu leaders. My parents both were retired principal. My grandparents were retired principal. My brother is a principal in Amravati Puddar International School. I completed my education from a very small village uh, from Madhya Pradesh nearby Buranpur. And uh, my post graduation from a district place Khandwa from uh, University of Sagar, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwavidyalaya Sagar. After that I completed physics. Uh, from Army School Mahu, Mahu, MHOW, military headquarter of OR. And then completed my MBA in training and development from USA, uh, honorary PhD in metaphysics, MA education. And journey continues. I belongs to a village which is known as village of the teachers. So maximum okay. uh, people are teachers from there and serving in various countries. So started my career from Army School and then switch over to KVS, NVS, Birlaj, uh, Pudar, and finally in UAE, heading one of the biggest and oldest school of UAE with 10,200 students in a single campus, which I am heading. Uh, that's my journey wow. and I am one of the board of director of Sharjah Private Education Authority, which take care of the different 120 curriculums starting from CBSC, ICSC, British curriculum, IBDP, Filipino curriculum, Pakistani curriculum, Russian, Canadian, and whatnot. So that's wow. my small journey. This is exceptional, sir. And we both have one thing in common. We both are alma mater of DAVV. Yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> Happy to know that. <laughs> yeah. So, sir, I'll come to my second question. Uh, what is your advice to students on choosing the right course and right career? Because that is very important. You know, that becomes a base for the entire life. So what would you advise yes. to students on choosing the right course? Yeah. So for switching over to the universities, choosing the right career, choosing the right subject. What I've always used to advise the students, first find out the potential. When I say potential, what is within you? You are good at what? What is what is that which satisfies your inherent talent? What is that sort of learning which makes you happy? And what is that which you can bounce with the smiling face during the tough situation? So that is your potential. So find out your potential. Second thing is, what is the possibilities? See, there are a lot of constraints, maybe financial maybe uh, linguistic, maybe area-wise. So find out the possibilities, what you can do, what, whether you will drive the change or you will be driven by the change. So find out that possibilities after the potential. Then the probabilities. Probabilities of integrating various aspect, which is demand of the market, which is demand of the society which is the one for which the world is ready to pay. Otherwise, whatever you will do, and you will become a master and no one is paying for that. What's the use of that? So be future aspect, be future fit. When I say future fit, means you have to answer those questions which are yet to be asked. When I say future fit, you have to think about those technologies which are yet to be invented. When I say future fit, you have to think about resolving those issues which are yet to be raised. So that is the probabilities. And then preference, what you will prefer and for what you will be preferred by the 
society, by the market, by the corporates, and by the people. So possibilities, probabilities, your preference, and potential. Now, in this periphery, no doubt one subject will not fit, one curriculum will not fit, because one subject makes you happy, another subject makes you productive, third subject makes you competitive, fourth subject enhance your competencies, and the fifth subject is that in which while doing a hard work, while doing a smart work, while having even the tough, tough time, you will bounce back with the smiling face. So all the combination of all those subjects, if fit all those things, you will be a star, you will be a rocking one. Find out that university, find out that curriculum, find out that course which satisfy your potential, your possibilities, your probabilities, and your preferences. Uh, I think this is one of the finest answer I've heard so far, sir. And there are three key takeaways for the students who are listening to this. One is, as sir said, that choosing something which you will be liking to do even in tough situations is really yes. what you're meant for. Yeah. Second is bouncing back. Are you driving the change or you are driven by the change? That is very crucial for you. And yeah. third is probably, sir, I'll take it as the finest thing is being future fit because the career you're starting is for the future. The course you're studying is for the future. So you should be future fit. A wonderful answer, sir. Thank you so much. As an educator, this uh, question often comes to me also that a student has a passion and a profession and they can only choose probably one. How to take it further? Yeah, passion and profession, no doubt, there is a gap, wider gap, but your interest, your potential, your bridging stone to bridge that gap. So actually the art of learning is bridging that gap. And up to what extent you are successful, that's your charismatic or charismatic personality. So bridge the gap of your patience and profession. That's not easy. For that, a lot of multitasking you have to do. A lot of mindful activities you have to do. A lot of liberal courses you have to choose because that will satisfy your passion. But at the same time, you have to bridge the gap between patient and profession. So that's, the, that's bridging the gap. And for bridging the gap, what is required? scaffolding by the scaffolders, university people, schooling people, and providing the platforms, platforms for jumping high in such a manner that even the sky is not the limit, it is just beginning. So whether right. the right. university is providing you that platform, whether the people will scaffolding you in such a manner that you will bridge the gap of your patients and your profession. So that's right. my on that. Perfect, sir. Uh, the key word is bridging the gap irrespective of you have multiple things to do. It's all about how better you can bridge the gap. So third question is that how can a school student better prepare themselves for the transition to university? See, preparing the students for the transition to university, the first and foremost thing is they should own the ownership of their own learning. Right. Up to what extent the schools are giving autonomy to a student being the owner of their own learning, that's a big question. So that is first mm -hmm. thing. Second thing is to be ready for future fit assessment. Days were gone when they were assessing your academic depth. Days were gone when they were assessing how frequently you answer, how quickly you answer. Days were gone when they were assessing what you know. Now the assessment is a challenging one. Nothing correct, nothing wrong. Up to what extent you are deciding and designing your thoughts in such a manner that you solve the problem by giving the most probable solutions. So giving the most probable solutions for any problem is possible if you are an independent learner, if you are owning 
uh, your own uh, learning as well as you are a experiential learner you are learning by your mistakes whether the school is allowing to commit the blunders to the students that's another question now ownership as well as allowing the students to uh, commit the blunders if we allow the students to commit the blunders and enjoy their mistakes they will go to the root cause of that mistake what went wrong and then they will revise it redo it review it and recreate it that recreation makes them fit for the universities so they should be the lifelong learner experiential learner independent learner and keep on learning by their mistakes and be ready right. for any sort of assessment perfect sir uh, uh, in fact uh, since you have a very long journey in education i am glad you come from a village that is village of teachers i am yeah. sure, i'm sure not many people would know this in india <laughs> and that is possible so in I, india only <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, so so the great part is that uh, the education is inculcated in you in your family in your village so in your long journey you have led to so many schools so many education uh, places what systems and what functions you have put in place in the current position in your school or in your previous schools that prepare students better for the university yeah the one foremost system and one the very important system very fruitful and we are getting the uh, very good responses uh, because of that system you know you name the country and our students are there globally the effect oh, okay. of effect of only one change which we have brought we have changed the classroom teaching learning our classroom into a thinking classroom into a thinking classroom whatever we teach them we provoke their thought process they think they think beyond they think beyond the box rather than they throw the box out so that thinking process and reflecting not responding but uh, reflecting with positive attitude with optimism these two changes we have brought we will give them see uh, recently let me tell you one example in ninth standard we have given uh, one assignment to the students that if the earth is speaking to the corona 24 in future hmm. what will be that dialogue hmm. so trust hmm. me the way the students have done the research and the way they have given the answer the solution of all the viruses of 19 2021 and what will be the probable viruses what sort of mutation will happen and possible mutation into 2024 and how to face it and what should be the structure of the schooling for that so they have come up with the model that the classes should be a flipped classrooms the teaching should be a blended learning and the school should be the hub of experimentation oh see the thought process and with that they design so many things and if we do that thing you know which university will not prefer you that's the question mark forget about yeah. which university you will be choosing our students there are many students who have been chosen by four four five five renowned universities many of them yeah. getting 110% 110% scholarships there are five students who is getting 110% scholarship so that is the way so if we change the classroom teaching into a classroom into a thinking classroom and then we can say by thinking classroom means again design thinking right. all those things comes into the picture there are many things right. but it is by default no need of teaching them design thinking and all they by default they will understood that thing what is the design thinking correct so, correct correct that's the only one change and that's a calculated risk we have taken and the first year we suffered because our results were not good we were that time yeah. the assessment of cbsc or whatever exam you take worldwide they assess only your academic depth they don't right. assess how creative you are they don't assess mm-hmm. how innovative you are they don't assess how critically thinking you have what they assess is within the periphery of the curriculum or syllabi like that 
Right. So first year we suffered a lot, little bit, but uh, our trustees and our parents had a faith with with us, and we carry out uh, carried out the same thing, and now we are in, enjoying it. Right. Uh, so, sir, in addition to that, there's one more question, and that has become critical for students today due to smartphone, 4G or 5G internet and so many applications. There is a lot of distraction for students. And first thing I would like to clarify is that they are not wrong because hmm. at the end of the day, they get something new and then it is so addictive that they get into it. But I have firsthand seen students wasting a lot of time. Uh, in creating the content, also in getting and consuming into the content. So, sir, what would be your advice as an educator for a student to save their time and using in, in, yeah. in the productivity? Very, very, very nice question. Yeah. Let me tell you, for this problem, neither the students are responsible, nor the devices are responsible, nor the surrounding are responsible, neither the culture is responsible. Who is responsible? We, we, and only we as an educator. Right. Are we training them? Are we mentoring them to embrace the technology instead of becoming technoidic? Wow. We are not. So whose, right. whose fault is this? We right. have to coach them. We have to train them to embrace the technology and enjoy it. But we are providing them the devices, we are giving them the websites, we are giving them the links, we are giving them to we are giving them the opportunity to Google it, and they are becoming a technoidic. Who is at fault? We have to integrate ourselves. Teach them right. how to embrace right. the technology. Teach them how to explore the machine. They will not become machine. You're very right. true. They are not only technoidic, but they themselves will become a machine. Right. Teach them how important their innovative thought process is, how important right. their time is, how important their independent study is. Mm -hmm. We are making them dependent on the devices. You see, every classroom, every university, it's dumped with the technology. See, exactly. dumping yeah. technology is not the answer. Right. Answer right. is available technology up to large extent how you are critically utilizing it that is right. the techno saviness techno saviness mm -hmm. is not dumping the classroom or the university room or whatever we by the technology not at all <laughs> we can right. see they are having tablet they are having smartphone they are having machines they are having desk what not when they will think so they should be independent they should embrace the technology they should explore the machine and that is possible only by mentoring them rather than scaffolding them using the machine and technology and proving that the human trends, human traits, empathy, sympathy, empathy, critical thinking, risk taking, mm -hmm. thinking divergently are more important than the machine. Trust me, the future is not the technology. Future right. is right. not the machine. Future is up to what extent you are embracing the technology, exploring the machine, and using your creativity, your innovativeness, your critical thinking, your design thinking, your decision making. That is important. So again, the question is same. Are you driving the change? Are you being driven by the change? Are you are driven by the change. Are you ready to drive the change? All these are the sophisticated add to you. That's all. So I think this is a very well message that you have given that there are two things we have to opt in. Whether to be driven by the change or to drive the change, choice is ours. Yeah. Sir, one last question I have for you is that since you have worked with some of the finest school in the top of the pyramid of education system. There are thousands of Indian principals and Indian schools that can learn from your experience. So I would like top three messages that you can give to the principals and the educators that they can adapt to provide world-class education to students or to become world-class schools. Number one is give the complete ownership to the students of their own learning. 
make them pedagogy based and research based independent experiential learner that is first thing second right. thing stop teaching them start scaffolding <laughs> them challenging uh-huh. them uh-huh. third thing change the schooling process into a hub of experimentation a hub right. of problem solving and uh-huh. lower down your ego of academic boss that's all <laughs> actually we are creating the problem see i wanted to cite one example uh, professor sugata mitra uh, one of my mentor the that oh, experiment i have i have heard his ted talk and that was one of the finest ted talk yeah, yeah i worked I with him so i worked with him oh, for some months okay, okay, so okay. hole in a wall uh, proves yes, that yes. proves uh. that learning happens naturally Uh-huh. and minimum intervention in the process of learning brings right. maximum learning outcomes that's all mm. so if we slow down our ego create minimum intervention in the path of the learning of a learner mm. wonders will happen but i i am dreaming that when that day will come <laughs> correct sir i am so happy that you brought uh, professor mitra here and i would like to tell all the educators to go and watch the ted talk the hole in the wall and that is all yeah. together a live lesson for ed- for an educator on how yeah. to transform a school into a a hub of learning sir any any final message for students nothing let them enjoy let them commit yeah. the mistake and let mm-hmm. them be innovative creative risk taker and let them throw the box out instead of doing something which is out of the box that's all right. they should Sir, keep on so smiling much. i mean yeah keep on smiling correct yeah But today i can tell you these 20 25 minutes were like the nectar of your experience coming in everything point by point everything crucial as an educator for me also it is so much of learning into such a concise uh, time so this comes is, from the real experience yeah, that you have given it is it is because of your fertile questions correct <laughs> the next the next important point for the teaching or for the educator fraternity is we should not depend on good or better or best answer we should frame the fertile questions which will give variety of answers answer. it went on very well because of your fertile question the credit goes to you too <laughs> thank you so much it's a real pleasure talking to you sir and i'm sure this is not the first time we are talking this is many time to come yeah. thank you so much sir and have enjoy your time and it's a pleasure meeting you today and interviewing you thank you thank you my pleasure too and thanks to edu tv they thank provide you. such type of platform where such type of discussions happen not a routine one beyond the box and making everyone future fit so credit sir, goes to edutv tania you. as well as pranav no sir it's also because <laughs> of you i mean talking to you hearing out listening to you is always a pleasure that's the reason we always want you to be available with us as and when you're free that's how it goes yeah, that's your greatness that you are giving credit to me no, <laughs> no, no, not at all, it all it all depends sir. on how, what you are listening and what you are uh, accepting it that is up to that no sir not at all that that's not the case at all sir Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Pramod. Uh, thank you, Ashish sir. Um, thank I, you. I, right. Welcome to EDU TV with 4.5 lakh plus viewers and over 1,500 educational repositories across the world. The founder is Mr. Pranav Guhathakarada, and co-founder is Ms. Tanya Sethi.